All right, welcome to our second family night on Wednesday nights here, and uh, hopefully this will be a blessing to you. We're going to start by teaching you a little game that our family plays in the car or in the vehicle riding down the road on long road trips or stuck in traffic or whatever. Uh, it's a pretty easy game. There's a couple of different levels. You can make this a little bit more challenging depending on the age uh, of your children. But we'll start with the easy one. The easy one is uh, we give a name from the Bible. It can be a place, it can be a person, or it can be a name of a book in the Bible. And so we give that name, and then the next person takes and gives a name. And the second person's name will start with the last letter of the person before them. So I'll start with Jesus. Jesus ends in an F, S. So Miss Rebecca will give a name that starts with an S. Samuel. So then Samuel ends in an L. So Callan goes next, and he gives us a name that starts with an L. Leviticus. Ah, which ends in an S. So Jackson starts with an S. Sarah. Sarah, okay. So Sarah has two different spellings, either an H or an AI. So uh, which one do you like? I. I, okay. So Braxton then will have to give us a name starting with the letter I. Israel. All right, which ends in an L, so then Landon uses L. Lamentations. Lamentations, which brings it to an S, which comes back to me. So uh, that's one way to play. Another way to get a little bit more challenging is each time that a person names a person or place or the book of the Bible, they have to tell a little bit of something about that book. Now, I also forgot to mention that the more rounds you do this, in Hebrew, in the Old Testament, a lot of the names start and end with the same letter. And so we chose to use the rule that once a name had been used in that particular game, it could not be reused. So you have to come up with a different name. You couldn't reuse Sarah every time S came up. So Landon finished with Lamentations, Lamentations uh, which begins or ends with an S. And so in the New Testament, there was Saul. Uh, the man who persecuted the church and then became the Apostle Paul. So my mine, Saul, ends with an L, which goes to Miss Rebecca with an L. Um, Levi. And okay. that was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. So that gives Callan an I. Isaiah. Isaiah. Good. Tell us a little bit about him. Or her. Was it a him or a her? Him. A him. Okay, so tell us a little bit about him. He was a martyr. He was? I think he was a martyr. He was a, what did he do for God? He, was his job. Um, he came close he a couple of times, I think. Yeah, he was a what? A prophet. He was a prophet in the Old Testament. Okay, good. So uh, now that's a, a tricky one because Isaiah has been used, but it was the person Isaiah, not the book Isaiah. So actually Isaiah can be used again in this game because there is the name of the book Isaiah. So you might have to keep track of that just in your mind, which passes the letter H to Jackson. Habakkuk. Okay. What about him or her? It's a very good question. <laughs> Uh, it's a book in the Old Testament. Okay. Jackson's <laughs> going with the book name in the Old Testament. All right. That's an H for K. Okay. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, Canaan starts with a C. Canaan starts with a C. It's a little harder when the camera's watching. Kings. Kings. All right. So the book, books of Kings, and tell us a little bit about those books. There's two of them. Tell us a little more <laughs> about those books. Um, what are they about? They, the kings of Israel. Okay. All right. So about the kings of Israel. Good. All right. Which gives Landon an S. Have you seen that yet? Uh, yes. No, I don't think since we were started. No, we did. Oh, okay. All right. Samuel's been used. Was that the first of the book? 
and you, mm. you didn't say parts of that. Right? All right, so pick one, and he'll use the other one. Okay, so <laughs> I would have said it was the book, so yeah. you can use okay, the other one. Okay, so... Uh, Tell us about the person saying it. He was woken up by God several times in the middle of the night uh, for a prophecy, would it be about? Well, it was to, God wanted to speak to him. Yeah. Okay, so uh, as a boy, Samuel was awakened. Now, <clears throat> taking it to another level, there is a series of uh, themes that the Quest students are working on in particular years. They memorize that go with each of the books of the Bible. So instead of being able to say uh, the books of Kings and just saying, you know, they're books about Kings of Israel, there is a particular theme that the young people memorize that goes with First Kings and a theme that goes with Second Kings. And so Braxton, uh, in this, this notch up version, would have to give us not only his book, Kings, but then he would have to give us the theme of First Kings and maybe Second Kings, depending on how you choose to play. So you finished with what? Same. Same. Oh. All right. So it starts with L. Um, so... For example, Leviticus. We haven't said Leviticus yet. Right? Yes. He used Leviticus the book. He did. All right. So, um, is there another one? Yes, Lamentations. Okay, so Lamentations is a book of the Old Testament. And if we're playing in this high level, then I would need to be able to give the theme of Lamentations, uh, which is Weeping Prophet. And so Weeping Prophet for Lamentations. Is that correct, yeah. Callan? Yes, no, Weeping City. Weeping City, okay. Weeping Prophet would be the guy who wrote Lamentation. All right, so we actually have in our quest book uh, here are the, the themes. Uh, you can find those in other places at church if you would like. We can get you a copy of those. Um, so Weeping Prophet for Lamentations. No, Weeping City. Yeah, because that's where he's weeping over the city of Jerusalem. All right, so I, I would give the theme, but then the same pass goes. It's Lamentations. It's an S. It goes to Miss Rebecca with an S. Shem. Ah. And he was one of the three sons of Noah. Okay. And where did he settle after the flood? Oh, my kidding. stuffers. <laughs> this, this is a good place to prompt uh, additional little bits of information uh, if you want to. But Shem. Okay, so Shem. Uh, she told us. The Middle East. East. Because the Semites, right? Yes, they yes, they settled in the Middle East. The, the Shemites or the Semites came from Shem. Good. All right, so M to Callan. No. Uh, Malachi. All right. And what is the theme of Malachi? Coming messenger. Coming messenger. Is that right? We'll check our... our uh, Yes, that is correct. Good job. All right, so an I goes to Jackson. Uh, Ishmael. Oh, nice. All right, so Ishmael. He was Abraham's illegitimate son. Okay, Ishmael. Uh, and what was the name of Ishmael's mom? Here you go. Mm -hmm. All right, good job. <laughs> so Ishmael was the name, passes on an L to Braxton. The Levites, which were a tribe, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Or was it what the was tribes of Benjamin? Yeah. Israel's okay. right. Yeah. What was their job? Like they distinctly they were the prophets, weren't they? they That's were where the, the prophets came from. What no. prophets? The other P. Other PR. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. So the Levites served as the priests in the temple. All right. So that passes an S on to Lamb. Sadducees? Uh huh. And then. Sadducees is not technically a name, so you just have to decide for your family if that's an acceptable answer or not. But the Sadducees, who were they? Weren't they one of the um, groups of people who did not like what Jesus was teaching, or is that only the Pharisees? Nope, that, they would have been one of the groups, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Good. 
All right, so that's our family game. So hopefully that'll be something that you can use uh, there at home tonight. If you want to pause the video and take a minute, play a couple of rounds of that just to practice, and then maybe tuck that away and have it for the next time you're in the car together. Okay, that was a weird pause. All right, we're back to our lesson now. Uh, so what we're going to go through today is continue with the theme of the character of God. Pastor Jim and Miss Laura uh, taught us a lesson last week. I apologize for the shaking of the computer a little bit uh, on the character of God. And so this week we want to do uh, the next in that series of three lessons. And uh, again, this is kind of a combination of devotions and a lesson. And so we want to share a couple of things with you. Callan, we are going to be talking about this thing of holiness. Can you read for us the definition there on the screen for holiness? Holiness, moral and ethical perfection, the absence of any evil. All right, good job. So we're going to talk about holiness of God. And holiness means the absence of anything evil and the absolute perfection for good. That doesn't just mean good more than others, but, but complete good, absolute perfect good, not in comparison with others, but in comparison with perfection. And so we're going to learn tonight about God's holiness. Number one in our notes, if you want to kind of take notes or if you just want to read through this. Jackson is going to read point number one for us, and then he's going to read some verses for us. So at home, uh, you can see there on the screen, Isaiah chapter six, verse one through three. You can see that. Uh, Jackson is going to look that up. He's going to read for us point number one, and then he's going to read for us those verses. But I would encourage you there at home together uh, with your Bible to look up Isaiah chapter six, verse one through three. If you want to do this as a, a sword drill, if your kids are at the age or maybe mom and dad are at the point where everybody's learning how to find their way around the scriptures, a uh, fun little thing to do is just do a sword drill together. Uh, maybe not every time you have devotions, but it's a fun little way to just get a little bit better each time at learning how to find your way around the Bible. So Jackson, would you go ahead and give us point number one and read those verses? Holiness is what God is. Uh, Isaiah 6, 1-3. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, with whom he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, and the whole earth is filled with his glory. All right. Uh, mine says the whole earth is full of his glory. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But I want you to notice in verse 3 that it says, Holy, holy, holy. Three times the angel says, holy, holy, holy. Now, a neat thing about the Hebrew language was that in Hebrew, when the writer or the person speaking wanted to really highlight something, they wanted to make something really stand out, they would repeat it three times in a row. It's kind of like their way of saying, hey, everybody, you really need to pay attention to this. And so as we read here in Isaiah, the description of an angel about God is that he is holy, holy, holy. It's, it's their way of drawing a circle and putting stars beside it and highlighting it and really wanting our attention to be drawn to it. Well, that's an interesting word to use, but what does that mean? Holiness means separated from sin and consecrated to God. Now, consecrated is kind of a big word, so uh, what do we mean when we say that? Well, holiness is the idea that you're being set apart, you're being taken away from something bad, separated from sin, but moving closer to something good, specifically God. And so the idea that we are moving away from sin but closer to God is the idea of holy. Consecrated means set apart or dedicated or committed to or specifically used for. And so the idea of holiness here means completely separated from sin and completely set aside for what God wants. The first thing that we see here is that God's glory 
sets him apart. God's glory sets him apart. In Psalm chapter 19 and verse 1, the Bible says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Now, how is it that the heavens declare the glory of God? Because in creation, in sunsets, in a starry sky, in a beautiful sunrise, uh, maybe not many of us are seeing those, but when we see those things, it's easy for us to look around and recognize the, the hugeness, the power, the majesty of God. And so the heavens declare the glory of God. As we think about the stars, humanity can't even count the number of stars we can estimate, but we can't even count that high. We, can't, we don't have the tools to even see them enough to count them. And yet God, one day of creation, he, he just spoke them all into existence. That's a, that is an awesome God, and it is a holy God. So his glory sets him apart. It is the, the recognition of who he is because of his holiness that sets him apart from everyone else. The second thing is that God's purity sets him apart. It's not just that God has an immense glory. It's not just that God uh, has an, an immense ability and we can praise him for his power, but we, we need to recognize his purity. It's not just that he has the ability to do good, but it's his complete separation from sin and from evil. I don't know if you've ever been really, really dirty before. But there was a camp that I went to in Canada called Canadian Adventure. And uh, part of Canadian Adventure is you would go out for certain periods of time, backpack camping, and then you would come back. And uh, the, the extended time, uh, we would go out and we would be gone for five days. And we were gone for five days and the weather was beautiful and the scenery was beautiful. But there was something we didn't do for five days. Shower. And so when we would get back from hiking in the wilderness and making fires and getting the smoke smell on us and cooking and having to wash our hands just kind of in the river and uh, packing and unpacking and setting up tents and taking down tents and hauling equipment here and there and, and climbing different things and coming back down and getting sweaty. And, and at the end of five days, we were, we were pretty gross. And that shower was very much needed. God never gets dirty in any way. God never needs to be cleansed of any sin or any wrong in any way. He is completely separate from sin. So here's a question for you to discuss at home. Uh, you can pause the video and, and talk about it and let everybody give their answer in. And then uh, you can unpause the video and see who had the closest answer. Here's the question for us. How many times in Leviticus does God talk about clean and unclean things in the book. So in the book of Leviticus, how many times does God talk about clean and unclean things? Go ahead and pause the video there for a second at home. Let everybody give a chance, have a chance to give their answer. And then you can unpause and we'll, we'll tell you what the answer is. All right. So the answer is just a little over 200, uh, just a few more than 200 times. It depends on exactly how you count, but uh, a little over 200 times God, who is holy, means he's separate from sin, says we need to be careful about the clean and the unclean things in the book of Leviticus. Now that was under the Old Testament. That was when those people had to live by clean and unclean ritual things. But the whole point of all of that was to show them how easy it is to get dirty and how they need to be separated from that dirtiness, whether it's physical dirt, ritual dirt, or, or spiritual dirt. And God says, I want you to be clean and not unclean. So here's a question for you to talk about as we wrap up uh, point number one. The question, if I can get my uh, PowerPoint to come up right, what does holiness mean? What does holiness mean? So we'll give you just a minute to discuss that there at home. What does holiness mean? Now, do your best when you answer this to, to kind of put it in your own words. If you can remember exactly what the definition is, that's fine. But we want to try to see, do we understand the concept? So take a minute and discuss what is holiness and see uh, how well you do. All right, welcome back. Hopefully your discussion went well. All right, our next point is going to be read in the verses by Braxton. Oh, just kidding. We're going to sing our song <laughs> uh, about holiness. So uh, here in a second, I'll restart that song. The words will be on the screen. Uh, hopefully you there at home can sing along. We'll be singing here. You'll hear us a little bit 
uh, with the audio. The words will be there on the screen and you can sing along and uh, enjoy the song. Pay attention to the second verse as we sing about the holiness of God. you did a fantastic job singing there at home. All right, point number two, Braxton, read that for us. And then if you would, go ahead and look up those verses. First Peter chapter one, verses 15 and 16. And Braxton's going to read them for us as you follow along there at home. Uh, holiness is what God wants. But as he who called us is 15 through 16. Yes. Okay. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. All right, so point number one, holiness is what God is. That's who he is. That's his character. That's his makeup. And point number two, though, it's not just what he is. Holiness is what God wants. It's what he looks for. It's what he longs for. It's what he desires of us. And we see that in these verses where it's a quote from the Old Testament. So near the beginning of the Bible and near the end of the Bible, we have this verse, be holy for I am holy. He desires that it, it comes out of us. He desires that it is a part of us. But you know, there's, there's something really interesting in these verses. So often people, they, they walk around through life thinking, if I just knew what God wanted for me, if I just had a letter from God, if I just had a verse from God, if I just had a clear direction from God, God, what do you want for my life? Uh, a lot of times the question is, how do I know God's will for my life? Well, in these verses, we find what God says. He said, this is my will for you. Th this is what I want for you. This is what I'm asking of you. This is what I am telling you that I want to come out of your life. We'll read those verses again and think about it from that perspective. As he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. I can tell you absolutely without any doubt, it is the desire for every one of us. It's a desire for every one of you that God says, here's my will for you. Here's what I want for you. No questions asked, 100%. I want you to be holy. It is my desire. It is my command that you be holy. And so as we think about God not only being holy, 
but desiring holiness from us, wanting holiness from us. Here's the next question for you to think about <clears throat> on the screen there. Why is holiness important? We've talked about what holiness is and that God is holy, but why is it important? So take a minute there at home and uh, talk about for a few minutes, why is holiness important? You can pause the video and then come back in just a minute when you finish discussing it and we'll cover point number three. All right, so hopefully you had some good discussion with your family as to why holiness is important. Point number three, which Landon is going to read the point and then the verses for us. Romans chapter 12. You may be familiar with these verses, but I would encourage you to go ahead and turn in your copy of the scripture to them anyway, so that you can look and make sure that what you're hearing from us uh, matches up with what God actually says. So, Landon, go ahead and lead us in that. Holiness is commanded to us. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, so in here we have two things that we're told in these verses. First is that we are to not be conformed to the ways of this world. Now, again, we're talking about holiness, and so we're thinking we need to be set apart from sin. And the system of this world right now is under the dominion of Satan. He's influenced everything in creation, including us, by sin. And so right now, God says, I don't want you to be conformed. Do not be conformed to this world. Now, that's kind of a big word. So uh, I've got some examples here. Yesterday, Miss Rebecca and I, if you are looking for a snack or a craft with this, we mixed up some jello and uh, we, we put jello in some different containers. You see this this container here is, is round and uh, it's got kind of a flat bottom and, and tall sides. And the jello conformed to the shape of that bowl. We poured it in, it was liquid when it cooled, it had conformed to the shape of that bowl. And so we have round, tall jello. Uh, we also have the shape of a cross. It's a little craft here. Um, the jello here, the cross shape doesn't have a little circular jello like in the bowl because the jello conforms to whatever shape we pour it into. And so we have this cross shaped jello. But then it's not just those cutesy little ones. Uh, we filled up the bottom of this Coke bottle that doesn't have a flat bottom that doesn't have straight sides. It's got all kinds of dimples and holes and divots and creases. And the point is that no matter what object it's poured into, Jello will always conform to that shape. And God says, do not be conformed to this world. So often we as Christians, we want to connect with people in this world. We want to connect to lifestyles in this world, to priorities in this world. And what happens is we end up pouring ourselves into the mold of this world and we take on the shape we look just like the world. But in Romans 12, God says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When we made Jello, we did not transform anything. We did not create anything new. We took water and we took gelatin and we took some flavoring that was in a packet. We mixed it all up and we poured it in. We didn't create anything new. It was all the same substances. We just mixed them all up. But when God says here in this verse, be transformed, he says, I want you to be a whole new thing. He said, I don't want you to just take the shape of the world. He said, I want to make you into a whole different substance, something completely new than what you used to be before. A great illustration of this is the idea of the butterfly, where a caterpillar goes into a cocoon and he comes out, not a caterpillar, but a whole new thing, a butterfly. Uh, this follows up very well with the sermon from this past Sunday where we talked about they missed seeing Jesus because they were looking for him to just kind of patch on to what they already had. They said, hey, I, I've got my bottle, Jesus. I just need you to, to fill in a little bit around here or a little there. And he says, no, 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 don't be conformed to this world. I want to transform you. And so we see that in these verses, God not only is holy and not only does he desire holiness, but he commands holiness 
of those who are his, those who follow Jesus. So question three is this. Where in your life do you need to practice holiness more? Where in your life do you need to practice holiness more? So we'll take a minute and you can pause it here. Uh, let each person in your family go around and give an answer. And then we'll come back and wrap up the video in just a minute. All right. So hopefully you had some time to discuss that there at home. Uh, we're enjoying our jello after each person answered. They got a spoon and got to have some of the jello. Um, hopefully you there at home have enjoyed spending some time with us on the holiness of God. I hope that you'll continue to think about these things. Please let us know uh, in the maybe the Facebook link, uh, the comments underneath, or even the YouTube link. Um, if there are places to leave comments there and just let us know uh, if your family engaged in this, if you maybe made Jello, if you played the name game, uh, whatever, and uh, we'll rejoice in how our families are able to do these on Wednesday nights together. Next week will be Brother Rich uh, bringing us one for the last week of April, and uh, we look forward to seeing you and uh, working through these spiritual growth things together with you then.